The main person on this bridge is the way to run another one. Do you get that far ahead if I say Oh! Rock music! It's quite good, rock music. Well, yeah, I mean, basically just been. Um been writing this album, been putting it together, um, and we now have, thankfully, the things are opening back up again now, which is glorious. It's been a real long time coming. Um, and we've got a, an actual gig in a week, so we need to properly start <laughs> rehearsing for that. Um, but no, yeah, well, we've basically been writing um, this, next, this next album and, and putting it together. I mean, we're, st we're actually still in the process of that. We've, we're sort of honing one song down. Um, which is the last one, and then it'll be yeah a nice nice little box box ticked for second album. Uh, that was that George Godfrey one, yeah. It was like February 2020, I think. Um, so long ago, man. Honestly, it's, and and that that show like even thinking about it, even as a as a human being, like like such a different person now as a result of this pandemic um, and. Like it's, I'm, I'm actually concerned about my approach to how we're going to be taking on these next shows or my role in the next shows as well. And um, yeah, it's going to be a really weird experience. I'm really looking forward to getting back to playing, um, and hopefully we're going to be able to bring something a little bit different as well um, to these new shows coming forward. That sounds demented. Damn good, do do, black on gum, doing that, as opposed to damn good, do do, doing that gum, doing. So one more goes. No, so this is through um, Zoe Alexander, I believe, um, and she works tirelessly um, with Nick Alexander Memorial Trust. Um, she's a mutual friend of us and Frank's. Uh, in fact, we played a show at um, Yulu together for Nick Alexander Memorial Trust. Um, and it's called A Peaceful Noise and we had a lovely night, Frank had a lovely night, it was actually banging to be honest and, and I think they're doing those most years, I don't, obviously I don't think they did one last year. Um, but yeah, so it was basically through that and I think um, Frank said, yeah, I'll put my name into the hat, I've just like got a new house, got a studio in the back garden, like, do you want to come down? Um, and to be honest, it was, it was a bit of a touch of gold to be honest, because with the previous album we found the right guy to do it. Um, and it was really, we really enjoyed the process. Um, that's Matty Moon. Um, we really enjoyed the process with him. Um, and we feel like the album came out the best it could. Um, and it was like intricate, everything about it was really intricately um, detailed and you know, everything we wanted to do went on the record, which is great. Um, and we're having a similar sort of approach here and it's not dissimilar to what Matty did. Um, it's just a slightly different sound and I think it's, it's abs absolutely matches the sound that we're trying to create as well. So I think we've just, we've just lucked out, you know, it could have been anybody, it just turned out to be Frank and, and to be honest I think it's, we're really, really fortunate that it was him because of his experience and because of his expertise and um, because of his lovely bloody house as well. <laughs> it's nice to be in such a beautiful place, um, nice and relaxing by the sea to record your album. You know, it's, there's nothing better than that really for me. Yeah, I, I, you know, I think um, the first session we did, I think, you know, he was still reading reading up about um, producing stuff like that and, and things that can be done on Logic. And, you know, I quite like that about it. He's also searching, he's building his studio in terms of he's buying new mics constantly. He's, um, you know, just basically progressing in his own side of things. And that that is being bought to the album, which is great. And, you know, it kind of, I suppose, gives a sense of freedom in that because things are being tried out, it's more sort of experimental rather than anybody being set in their ways about anything. Um, yeah, I think one of the things, to be honest, um, when we started recording the drums, there was just a nice moment between us when we we just kind of thought, you know, there's 
here's the drums, okay, well, I'll make the drums sound good and, or in the room and you make them sound good through the speakers kind of thing. It's like, yeah, okay, good. That's what, yeah, that's a good way of sort of doing it. Whereas previously we've had a little bit of difficulty with, you know, um, sort of I'm, I've walked in to, ready to track my drums and somebody's there tuning my kit and it's, well, okay, fine. <laughs> if that's the way you want to do it, that's the way you want to do it, but yeah. Yeah, he has, yeah. I remember when he made the transition. Um, he brought it into rehearsal and the first time. Um, he had a his previous amp, which is very much its own sound, and it was very much an iconic sound for what we did at the time. Um, and he likes to play quite clean through his amp and then use sort of effects on top and pedals on top in order to, to get the sounds that he does. Um, but that, the first time he brought that Artist 15 into into rehearsal, it was like, oh wow, okay, so this actually, it's just sort of fill, filled some holes that we thought were uh, impossible almost to, to get, and, and yeah, it really worked out really well. Then we then we toured with it, it sounded great. Jake then used the Unity amp, um, and that sounded super fat on tour. Um, and I think you guys gave us a one by 12 and a two by 10 stack, and or maybe it was a four by 10, and it, it just sounded really, really beautiful the whole tour, and we were really, really happy with it, um, and also, I guess the unity of having both Black Star amps there on stage, it just it just all brought it together. It was really, really nice. It's been it's been a real real great addition to our sound. <laughs> Should be utilised just on that end section. Uh, just on on. Yeah, I wouldn't mind trying the telly, but there's the one that you like as well. And all. And mm -hmm. as well, the, the the amp is quite gained up and broken, so we can always. Yeah, well, that's the that first out. thing I want to do actually. <laughs> Just um, so playing from half through the verse, you want to play the pre chorus for me? Yep. That was really nice. That's got a bit more low mids on it. I'm really confused. What chord do I come in on? Um, just checking that everybody understood that I, for the first time ever, ever actually had a bad idea. Yeah, it's a weird. Um, uh, okay, cool. Let's do another take. Yeah, it's just about, yeah, just trying to keep the chords as open as you can. Okay, it's just, just quiet. It's quite weird. a change, yeah, you know, I'm aware. It is a bit That's... weird, but I will do my best, yeah. Yeah, yeah, cool. Right, let's... Yeah, so basically, um, mostly comes from, like, a lot of things just sort of stem from quite a small idea and then sort of grow from there. Either me or Luke um, or Jake will come to rehearsal um, and with an idea, and be it a shit idea, be it a good idea, we'll sort of test everything out. Um, and actually, some of the shit ideas are the ones that blossom into the best songs and um, you know often actually that might, idea might not be part of the song um, but it, it is quite an organic sort of thing almost you know it almost is just like growing a plant basically you have the one idea then we'll go okay well where does this need to go and what does this need um, or I'll try and get the vibe of what you know the little bit of magic that we felt um, when that idea was bought and make sure that we can bring that into the rest of the tr tracks. Um, so usually we'll definitely always do the music first, um, then start sort of writing me melodies on top, and Luke will, Luke will complete it by um, 
by writing the lyrics and then, yeah, it's ready to go, ready to record. I'm so, yes, I'm so excited about this. <laughs> it sounds so good. Three, two, one. Space echo. Yeah, give that space bit echo. Bit of slap. <laughs> we're doing increases we, on that as well, yeah? Yeah, yeah. Well, I, the, the, so the main, the whole song really is outside of the open, um, outro. Yeah. Two ways playing. I, I like that. I think that's the nicest. Yeah, and nice. the, the old one was. Can you please tune that bit? Is it? I will, but yeah. But I think that that's nice and more brutal. Yeah. Okay. What a riff. Yeah, you wrote that. You wrote pretty much all of this, didn't you? Most of the album, to be honest. Well, let's <laughs> not. Do that. I could, yeah. Well, actually, that's what I was going to say at first. Maybe not have to do that. Yeah, just, yeah. just keep, just keep it. Yeah. Yeah, 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 nice also, I have to say, you hit an open G string in the middle of that, and it did funny things to my soul. Yeah, yeah it, it, it did sound quite nice. Yeah. It, it just it was kind of ragged and nice. Way. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. So um, we were due to go to um, go to the states and and release the album out in the states, which was going to hopefully um, be like a nice little catalyst for us. We're also going to be going south by southwest, um, then come back full UK tour, then going into Europe. Um, and of course that just got shut down. I think it was actually two days before we were supposed to leave. Um, they, yeah, it all got locked down. Um, so then we've just been waiting and waiting and waiting to tour this album. And, and most of what's on the album we've been playing for a while as well. Um, so this November we're going to be touring that album, um, finally getting it done. I think, to be honest, with the state that we're at now in terms of with this new album and it being recorded now, and those are the songs that we feel identify us a bit more. Um, we'll probably see a couple of those so those new songs being sort of banded around within that set, but mostly it's going to be touring that last album and, and kind of finally, yeah, like I say, with box ticking, like getting that box ticked and, and sort of allowing the release of that album to happen, if you like, and, and us be released from it as well. So basically, um, plan is, the end of this year, we're going to tour uh, first album, It's All There But You're Dreaming. Um, finally get that out of the way and then it, it, as soon as the year turns we're going to we're going to be really focusing on the second album um, and pushing that and that's going to be I, I, I wouldn't be able to say any kind of release schedule just now because um, we don't know what it's going to be like when you know the world opens back up and people can go back to gigs and we it's one thing that we've learned at least is that the future is just un, unbelievably unpredictable now um, if not more than ever um, so yeah, it's going to be at the turn of the year, so the start of 2022, that's going to be when you seriously see the start of the album too. Yeah, I mean, we're always looking forward to going, I mean, basically the, the first, first things first, any venue that we're going back to, um, even on this next tour and tours after that, we're super grateful that they're still around and, and we really want to help them. We want to, we want to fill them up as much as we can um, and get, get, that, get that revenue stream going again. Um, we're really looking forward to and grateful for places like Bootleg Social for still being open. We love going up there um, and it's one of our favourite venue, venues to play and you know it's, it's just going to be so nice to be able to get back on the circuit you know and getting back into these venues having it been such a risk of losing a lot of them. Um, it's going to be yeah I'm really looking forward to, to playing them. If you say it once, I'll beg you twice and kill the